I'm thinking of Pierre Cardin, and I'm drawn back to time. I feel it still. Our first encounter. Known for their distinctively avant-garde creations, not the type of thing for your average shopper. Extremely impractical. Every new collection is just kind of a reflection of the one before it. I study my own stuff more, more than other people's. But anyway, yeah, that's how I kind of feel like I can make progress, by setting the mistakes and successes of my past. Hi, my name is Makassi. In an effort to make the best video possible, I will be splitting the reviews of this jacket into, let's say, three to ten parts. This way, I will edit it to the best of my ability rather than just rush it. For video number two, we're gonna look at the history of the tech shoulder and learn a bit more about shoulders in general. While researching this video, I actually learned a lot more about shoulders and I would like to pass on that knowledge to you if you guys are kind enough to give me your time. I do have a quick disclaimer though, so there are a lot of douchebags who are into Rick who love to correct people for the most minute errors. Every community has some of these cunts thinking like they're better than everyone. I'm hoping to show you guys that someone who is into Rick, me, is not a dick. Again, it's a very small percentage but they are a loud minority. Think, think the Islamic faith. 1.9 billion Muslim in total, roughly speaking. Let's say 0.2% of that are extremist people. You don't hear about the peaceful 1.7 billion people, but the majority of the Western people will think that 1.9 billion think like the extremists, which is putting it at a very progressive estimate, 0.2% of 1.9 billion. I hope you know what I'm talking about. So I have accounted for all of these assholes. I have refreshed myself with the Rick Owens runway from Sparrow 02 to Edfu 2023. Edfu refers to the Egyptian temple on the west bank of the Nile. Sparrow refers to Michelle Lamy's nickname for Rick's penis. So I refreshed myself with as much as I could, but you know, I'm sure they'll find the most minute detail and then condescendingly correct me. So as you can see in my last video, I recently got a new jacket that has shoulder that shall we say a bit more abstract than a regular pair of shoulders. Anyway, I wanted to find out more about the history and the importance of shoulder and also trying to find the roots of these kinds of shoulders. By the way, side note, you should also practice tracing your emotions. So at the end of each day, I go through my day in my head and then trying to trace back my emotions. If I were to be angry that day, I will ask myself, why was I angry? What was triggering me? Was it somebody cutting me off or was it somebody yelling at me? Like, why was I in a bad mood? And I'm also, I also do that when I'm happy. Like, what did I do that day that made me so happy? This way, I will find the answer and then I can use that again to, if I have a down day, I could like, okay, this is how you got, this is how you made a good day. So try to do that. And then obviously the vice versa would be to not do what you did that made you angry or sad or stressed or depressed, whatever it is that day. So it's very effective in making you become more emotionally self-aware and I think it makes you a better person you know try it out a couple of times and see if it works for you it works for me it's very helpful but anyway I have watched a good amount of documentaries and read 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 a good amount of interviews from designers that you and I respect such as Dries, Demna, Rick, Raff, Musha, Margiela, Helmut Lang, uh, Jill Sander and they really pay a lot of attention to the shoulders whenever they make outerwear. So I will now show you a few clips where designers you and I respect talk about the importance of shoulders. So please, don't expect to see Kim Jones on Michael Kors. For me in a silhouette, the two most important details are the shoulder and the shoe. Um, I think the shoulder gives you a certain attitude and the shoes, of course, give you a certain movement. They are kind of an alien Art Nouveau idea. I'm continuously working on shoulders. I've been doing this one for the, I don't know, the past five, four seasons. It evolved into this with the transparent structure and the architecture. A vote for otherness a vote for considering other options other than the 
very narrow aesthetics that we live in. If we're all put on the planet to create a sense of balance, I'm gonna make those shoulders to remind everybody that we don't have to aspire to the set of values that the airport tells us we have to. If you wanna make a fashion designer come on the spot, ask them about the shoulders, how they made it, how important was it, how long did they spend on it, they will love you. The mere fact that this video exists should tell you it wasn't the cow fur or the cloud zipper, it was the shoulder. That was the main reason as to why I got this jacket. Okay, so broadly speaking, there are six shoulders, which will be on the screen right now, somewhere here, hopefully. What we're gonna focus on today is obviously the pagoda because the tech shoulder on the jacket that I have for you today is, let's say it fall broadly under this category because it's definitely not falling under continental. The pagoda shoulder was invented by Pierre Cardin. In the late 70s, early 80s, Pierre Cardin was obsessed with space and, you know, China and hentai porn. And the pagoda shoulder was inspired by the cornices of the Chinese pagoda. By the way, um, pagoda and temple, it's used interchangeably, at least in Cambodia. I don't know about other places, but temple, pagoda, same thing. So if you put the photo side by side, the tech shoulder or the pagoda shoulder and the cornices of pagoda, you can see the inspiration a lot more clearly. So designers such as Oliver, Olivier from Balmain, Marc Jacobs, Demna Balenciaga, Martin Margiela, Rick, they have all have interpreted their own version on what a pagoda what a pagoda shoulder could be. I'm gonna tell you a quick story about painting and painters and I promise it, it connects back to the story. So when I was younger, I used to love artists or painter who could paint very realistic, like anything, realistic portrait, realistic apple, a camera, whatever it is, I just love realism. And I never got like Jackson Pollock, I never got Kandinsky, I never got Picasso because I wasn't a big fan of abstract painting, but the older I get, the more I realize why abstract artists exist because, because I just realized that they decide to do all these abstract painting because they don't want to box themselves in creatively and just do realistic painting. Some of them do and can do very realistic painting, but it's hard to continue to be creative when you box yourself in only to realistic painting. You know, this is why the pagoda shoulder exists. Yes, of course, the continental is good, but when you have made so many jackets, when you own so many jackets with the same continental shoulder, you want to try a new thing. And this is why I believe the pagoda shoulder is like the abstract art to what realistic art is. A jacket featuring a pagoda shoulder should not be anyone's first jacket. You know, you will own many regular jackets, but eventually you're going to get bored. And let's do this. Think Sushi Chef. At first, it's just raw fish over some rice. And then, you know, the chefs start to experiment. They start using other type of seafood, uh, frying the fish, using different rice, um, using other sauce other than soy sauce because they want to express their creativity. There's only so many way a raw tuna on rice can be made without the chef going mad because he's gonna feel robotic. However though, if you don't own many standard looking jackets or workwear jacket, whatever you call these type of jackets, Look towards Dior, you know, for all of your basic looking jackets. And you know, when you're bored of the boring standardized looking jacket, you can look at Rick, you can look at CDG, you can look at Ro Yoji, you can look at Sakai, you can look at Junior, CCP, and a few more brands that have contributed to the abstract side to fashion. And I'm also not taking a dig at standardized looking jacket, Bodies. Bodies makes amazing jacket, but they are still standardized looking jacket. They're just typical jackets with just more detail. All right, so that's a bit of history about the pagoda shoulder. So let's get into the Rick Owens now. So the tech shoulder. So tech is just the first three letter of the spring summer 2020, the tech Couture collection. And tech Couture is Rick Owens' grandmother mixtech maiden name. And the tech Couture season was really just a big deep dive into his heritage on the Mexican side. It's a very solid collection. It has a few good pieces that I liked. It has a few pieces that have carried over. Obviously the tech shoulder. Rick has more shoulders in his arsenal with the likes of the Zionic shoulder, the Kunz, the um, Neuer, the Cobra, 
but all of these can be categorized underneath the pagoda jacket, pagoda shoulder, broadly speaking of course. The first tech shoulder was shown in Spring Summer 20, the tech photo in these looks. And I have looked through all of regular ones from Sparrow 02 to Edfu 23. The first time the tech shoulder was shown by Rick was Tech I am 91% sure that I am correct, but I could be wrong, so that's why I left that 9% out there, just in case those douchebags come in and try to correct me. I wanna know. The tech shoulder came out in 2008, whatever the collection name is. Then next season, Fall Winter 20, the performer collection, Rick continued the tech shoulder with these looks. Yaddy, 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 yaddy. In spring summer 21, Flagathon, there was no tech shoulder. Same thing with Gethsemane, no tech shoulder. Focacine didn't have any tech shoulder either. And then fall winter 22, the strobe collection. These tech shoulder made a return to the runway with these looks. And then on spring summer 23, at Fu, more tech shoulder show up. This interesting looking leather, it's um, semi-transparent leather that was inspired by parchment and um, it is made using a specialized glis glycerin? Gl glycerin treatment and has a very soft and oily hand feel. Oh, but you didn't see the, uh, the translucent leathers that we're doing. That's leather? Yeah, I feel it. Oh wow, the heaviness is surprising. That is just a little bit of history about the tech shoulder and the his a little history behind the power shoulder, pagoda shoulder, how important shoulders are to a jacket. Okay, so now let's talk about the tech shoulder that I have with me, the jacket, the strobe pony hair Klaus jacket. I believe it's just simple padding because when you touch it, when you're trying to pinch it in, it is that it's hollow. You can press it and then when you tap on it, you can hear that it's hollow. I wish it would fill with leather or something because I feel like it's not gonna be held up that nicely throughout time because let's imagine I'm just leaning against a wall and then there's nothing in there, it's hollow and then it's just gonna bend in there. Like, what if I fucked up the shape? Obviously, I won't know how durable the shoulders are until I wear them for a year or two, but so far, I am not a fan of the hollowness of these shoulders. And I measured it, it's, it is three inches above. So from the shoulder, it's three inches higher. What I do love about the shoulder is it's, they they frame your face, you know, they, it keeps the your shoulder symmetrical. You can see the end line from both sides, so it frames your face. But the downside of that for me is that I have a gigantic face, so it just, it really emphasized my gigantic head. In the past few years, I have grown to love my big head. I used to be a bit insecure about it, but I think that was just probably because I was trying to conform my body to just the ideal body that our fucked up little society has come up with. You know, have abs, skinny legs, big muscles, um, high pointy nose, big eyes, a lot of hair, small forehead. I am nowhere close to where I want to be with my body, but I only have one body, so wh why why should I hate my body? You know, hating the body that carry me from places to places just seems a bit idiotic. Like, take care of your body to the best of your ability, and as long as you're not constantly in the hospital, it's a healthy body. There's always gonna be somebody with better abs. There's always gonna be somebody with better hair than you, better nose, better eyes, and there's always gonna be somebody who can dress better than you, meaning me. So don't try too hard with your fashion thing, okay? You're never gonna top me. You're never gonna top me and my friends. The modern society is kind of obsessed with self-hatred and overall everything negative, you know? This is why we love gossip. This is why news exists, you know? It's 80% negative news. A lot of news like CNN, EW, uh, Fox News, it just, they do a lot of negative headlines because that grabs you more. Not a lot of people are gonna be reading. Oh yeah, Makassi went to work and he got home safely. That's not newsworthy. We focus too much on a negative. We focus too much on negativity. I think that's my point. And I don't know how it relates to this video, but we're kind of here, so let's embrace it. <laughs> Other than the shoulders, what draw me to this jacket and what draws me to Rick Owens, we want something different. You know, after owning countless jacket with regular shoulder, it has become 
monotonous, if you continue to get the same things or do the same thing, no matter how much you love it, eventually you're gonna get bored of it. Sometimes you just want something to be subtly or majorly different because you're just bored with the status quo. And I believe that's why brands like Rick, CDG, and Yogi's are good because the majority of people will be fine with the Gucci, with the Balenciaga, but when you want something a bit more abstract, you have to go to the avant-garde scene. At the core of the Bodhi jacket is just a standardized looking structured jacket. And at the core of this jacket is the $5,000 price tag. So I can, you know, stunt on the Rick Owen scene because it's very exclusive. And I can stunt on the Hypebeast and Sneakerhead scene because that whole community just messed up. They, you can make the ugliest shoes, but if you limit it to 500 and then have it get co-signed by Travis Scott or Kanye or Pharrell, they will sell out and then the sneakerheads and hypebeasts will come up with ways to justify why they love it. Why even though it's objectively ugly, they love it because it's limited. A good example it would be, so recently they started re-releasing or retroing the LeBron 9s and back in 2011, 2012, there was the LeBron 9 that watched the throne. Everybody was lusting after that shoes because it was just so limited. But at the core of it, it's just black shoes with gold trimming. Now that the shoes are released again, look at it. They're sitting, like these shoes are sitting. But yeah, <laughs> anyway, beautiful, beautiful shoulder. This is the second video. I have a lot more video. I believe the next one we're gonna be talking detail. So that's gonna be very very long and I'm excited to wear it out more just learn more about the jacket and hopefully keep you guys in excuse me hopefully keep you guys entertained with these videos but yeah next video we're gonna look at every strand we're gonna count every strand of the cow fur on this jacket my name is Makassi I will see you next week about this jacket so shoulders are a choice, not functional. Or their function is to say no to banality and conformity.